It's 4.30 on WKYT this morning. It was an unusual sight at a Lexington store. Police say an officer accidentally hit a suspect and the building with his police cruiser. Still many unanswered questions this morning after investigators found a man dead on the roof of a building on the UK's campus. And it's been three months since a double homicide in Laurel County. And coming up here, what deputies now have to say about what is next in the case. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It's nice to have you with us on WKYT Bright and Early. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Thanks for joining us. And let's check in now with Micah to see what's happening in the weather world. Well, we're looking at some storms just to the north of us. As I pulled in to work early this morning, you can actually see some of those storms off in the distance. And that's back toward, I mean, you got to get into Ohio and also Indiana. You can actually see lightning that far away as these storms build higher and higher in the atmosphere. Now on Defender, we're keeping it up there for now, but that front actually sags southbound just a bit, and that'll spark off some showers and some thunderstorms later on today. Right now, it's mainly just affecting northern portions of Kentucky. Temperatures are in the 70s. It is absolutely muggy already this morning. We'll look for some spotty storms later on this afternoon. Now, we'll go throughout the work week. We'll talk all about Tropical Storm Bill coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, we'll see you then. An arrest for disorderly conduct took a strange turn at a Lexington shopping center. Lexington police say an officer accidentally hit the handcuffed suspect and a store with his cruiser. This happened around 6 last night at the Family Dollar on Southland Drive. The suspect was taken to the hospital. Sam Smith is tracking the investigation this morning. I heard one of my coworkers say, oh my gosh, he ran into the building. A Lexington police cruiser crashed into this family dollar store. Katie Misbeck works at a neighboring business. So I ran out and saw the cop car backing out with glass all over it. And that's when I saw the guy laying on the ground. The guy she's talking about is the man police say was causing an annoyance in the area. Before the accident, an officer arrested the man for disorderly conduct. They say he was sitting on the sidewalk between the car and the store, handcuffed. At some point during this uh, encounter, the officer was in his car. He lost control of his car. The car lunged forward and struck the subject that he had arrested, and then they went into the business. After the collision, the suspect was taken to UK hospital with non life threatening injuries. Police say it's difficult to tell at this stage of the investigation whether or not the suspect was pinned against the wall. The reconstruction team will investigate the wreck and will check with other businesses for surveillance footage. The officer involved was unharmed, but was visibly shaken up over what happened. He seemed pretty torn up about it. It was all an accident. In Lexington, Sam Smith, WKYT. Well, police say the store did have some damage after the crash, but it is structurally sound. This morning, we're continuing to track a death investigation on the University of Kentucky campus. Police say someone found a man dead on a roof yesterday afternoon. They say someone walking nearby noticed the man on the roof of a residence hall on South Limestone that houses graduate students. Investigators say the man was dead when they got there. They used a rope and rescue system to get the body off of the roof. Investigators are not sure what caused the man's death, but at this time, they say they do not suspect foul play. We're still looking at it at this time to find out exactly why he was on the roof. Um, we don't know at this point. We're interviewing um, residents to uh, try to determine that. That man's name has not been released. Police say he was not a student at UK. They say he was subleasing one of the rooms inside the residence hall from a UK graduate student. Well, three months later and still no rest, this morning investigators tell us they need your help as they try to figure out who killed a Laurel County couple and set their home on fire. Donnie and Sharon Jackson were both found dead in their home in March. Neighbors tell us not knowing who's responsible still worries them. Jordan Valines has that story. It was an incident that sent shockwaves through the small community of Lily. It's a little nerve-wracking as neighbors. The morning of March 8th, deputies found Donnie and Sharon Jackson shot to death in their home. Whoever 
shot them apparently set the trailer on fire to cover up the crime. No witnesses and no arrests. Whoever set the fire is still out there. Leaving neighbors like Colin Story increasingly uneasy. We don't open the door after dark. No, lock, we lock it. But investigators say in order to nail down new leads on a suspect, they need new tips from the public. We've interviewed everybody that we could possibly interview. Uh, and we're still getting leads in on this, not, not very often, but we still are getting some tips from the public. Three months later, the reward sign that now sits in the front yard of the Jackson's home is a reminder to neighbors about what happened behind the boarded up windows. And hopefully the reminder and the reward will lead to new information in this case. We've got some people out there or a person out there running around that has killed two individuals uh, in a very violent crime. And we need to take them off the streets and put them where they need to be, in jail. In jail and away from the possibility of potentially destroying yet another innocent life. In Laurel County, Jordan Valines, WKYT. Well, a reward for the arrest and conviction of the person responsible for the deaths of Donnie and Sharon Jackson is set at ten thousand dollars. Four thirty-six now on WKYT, and this morning a man has been airlifted to the hospital after police say a Grant County Sheriff's deputy shot him. It happened last night at a mobile home park near Crittenden. Police say the man pointed an assault rifle at the deputy and fired. Police say the deputy fired back, hitting the man in the face and chest. The man's condition is not known. The deputy was not injured. This morning, investigators are trying to figure out what led to a deadly accident at the Boone National Guard Center in Frankfort. They say 23 year old Brandon Cloud of Harlan County was killed. Another man was badly injured when a snorkel boom overturned yesterday. Investigators say both men are civilian contractors. They were installing siding on an aircraft hangar at the time. The injured contractor was airlifted to UK Hospital. Investigators say he is in critical condition this morning. The family of a Whitley County boy hit and killed by a school bus hopes that the tragedy can be turned into something that saves lives. Ten-year-old Jonathan Chatham died in March, moments after getting off the bus near his home. Investigators say it appears he cleared the bus, went into a ditch, then came back under it. But Jonathan's family thinks something else brushed Jonathan, causing him to fall under the bus. In an exclusive interview, his grandmother told us the family doesn't blame the bus driver for what happened, but they question a driver's ability to see children at the bottom of the bus steps. There's either not a mirror that sees there to notice that the kids are there, or perhaps there should be a camera monitoring that area. Well, the family says they want a better understanding of what happened so they can help others. The bus no longer stops on the side of the road where this happened. It now stops at a nearby driveway. We reached out to the Whitley County School Board multiple times to get an update on the investigation, and we have not heard back. This morning, police are trying to figure out if a string of burglaries targeting veterinary clinics could be connected. In the last few weeks, police say two clinics in Lexington and one in Richmond have been broken into. The owner of the clinic in Richmond says burglars stole prescription pet medicines, including heartworm, flea, and tick products. He says those items are often resold. I feel like it's an organized group who has a way to get money for this product pretty quickly. Lexington police are looking over surveillance video from the two burglaries here. So far, they have not made any arrests. We're tracking a traffic alert this morning. If you're driving through McGoffin County, demolition on the Gifford Road overpass on the Bluegrass Parkway starts today. The project will last three days. The overpass near Salyersville will be completely torn down by Thursday. Traffic will be stopped for 20 minutes at a time while they tear down bridge beams. A new real line bridge will be added to the road later this week. Well, WKYT this morning is just getting started. Our time right now, 439. Well, life jackets are a crucial staple in summer pounds. safety, but is your child wearing the right size? Moms Every Day shows us what to look for when we return. And we're looking outside, seeing those storms to the north of us. Here comes some rain for today and really the next several days. I'll show you a pretty wet pattern coming up.